A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 33. Drilling the holes in the box to mount the gauge protector bars and checking the alignment of the holes with each other. There are a few different ways to do this job. For instance, I could mount the individual blocks with the holes in the middle on a mandrel and then use my rotary table to get very accurately positioned holes in each corner. The only trouble is, these tutorials are basically designed for beginners and intermediate home workshop model engineers. I didn't have a rotary table until about five years ago. So as usual, instead of using correct engineering methods, and bear in mind I am definitely not an engineer, I'm going to use my drilling machine. On my drilling machine I have a really cheap cross vise. This device has proved very useful over the years, it has at least allowed me to keep all of my fingers. Once again I don't have any parallels, so I'm using pieces of mahogany, which are square enough for this job. All I have to do is position the four blocks one at a time in this cross vise and using a centre drill make a hole in the corner of every one of the blocks in exactly the right place cosmetically and in exactly the right place to line up with each other. I think I'd better give a health and safety warning. you just seen me wipe away the swarf with my finger. I must warn you that brass swarf is very sharp and will stick in your fingers and it's painful. I do like to live dangerously. Life on the edge. Even though all of these blocks are more or less the same, when I put them in the machine vise, I do have to slightly adjust the position of the cross vise to get them to be exactly in the same place relative to each other. The adjustments are minute, and really there shouldn't need to be any adjustments, but my eye tells me that they're not in the right place unless I make a slight adjustment, so I'm following my instincts and doing that. I quite like things that are handmade, even if they're handmade using machines. But there is a very fine tolerance, in my opinion, for handmade things. And there are a lot of things out there that are very badly made by hand. Up to a point, it's relative to the amount of time that you take to make the part. But common sense does enter into the equation. Here, for instance, I'm using a piece of mahogany planking to make sure that each of the parts is lined up with the jaws of the machine vise. Then I drill the hole in the position I think it should be in. The principle I am using I call the calibrated eye, and you don't get this automatically. I don't think many people are born with it, it's just down to practice. The reason why I am quite a competent keyboard player is because over the years I've done a lot of practice, particularly in the early days. Plus, quite a lot of the musical work that I did many years ago was seven nights and six lunchtimes. And this frequency of operation taught me an awful lot. And the same goes for home workshop model engineering. If you practice, you will get better at it. With the centre drilled pilot holes, all done, it's time now to move on to enlarge the holes to clearance size for 6BA. For this part of the operation, I'm using the centre part of the machine vise. Every one of the clips you've seen so far has been heavily edited. This took a lot longer than I'm showing on the video. And I think by the sound that the twist drill is making, it's blunt. But nevertheless, I will press on regardless. One by one, the holes are now appearing around the edges of each of the blocks. And here they all are, each with a hole drilled in the corner. And as you can see, if you look closely, maybe they're not perfect, but they're very much near enough for rock and roll. The next part of the job is incredibly tedious. I'm cleaning up the top and bottom of each of the blocks. This silicon carbide paper would cut much better had I have used a lubricant but for the purposes of the video, I'm doing it dry. After deburring all four of the blocks, I put them together like this. And guess what? Without using any needle files or enlarging any of the holes, every one of them aligns with the other. This is not a beginner's look. It's taken a long time to get my eyes to work like this. And even now, after so many years, I still do get it wrong. 
You can see, for instance, that one of these blocks is not perfectly square. I'll take care of that very shortly. I bolted the blocks together in pairs, and here I'm in the outer part of the workshop, cleaning them up, rounding the edges, and making sure that they are all very much the same as each other. After using the belt sander, I used the polishing spindle, but now I'm cleaning them up using a piece of Scotch Brite. This is a before and after shot. The one on the left is not perfectly aligned, I need to tap it with a mallet. There is a slight tolerance with the whole clearance size. How did I know what the clearance size was? Well, I have a piece of paper pinned on the wall behind my Boxford lathe, and this gives me BA tapping size drills and clearance size drills. This is what the blocks look like after a bit of cleaning up. The one on the right is finished, the one on the left needs a bit more work. I separated the completed pair of blocks, and here I'm measuring the distance between them, and I get this to be one and seven eighths of an inch. I'm going to make the protective bars from three sixteenths of an inch diameter brass, and here I've marked a piece of brass bar using a felt tip pen. This is just oversized to allow for machining in the lathe. And here is a nearly complete set of parts for the water gauge protectors. In the next episode, I will machine the protector bars, thread them 6BA at both ends, drill and thread a hole into two of the blocks to use a pinch bolt to hold them in place. Then finally, I will fit them to the water gauges and see what they look like. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.